Gizmo here. Welcome to the man cave. <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about some knots. I've got the climbing bug again <laughs> and I, um, I've just been going through some of my knots. Now I've been doing this sort of thing for about 35 years. I want to go through some of the ways that I tie knots. I've seen people tie knots in other ways, the same type of knot. I just want to go through the way that I tie knots. This isn't a tutorial video, it's just what I do and you might just pick up something from them. Just little things that you learn over the years that make things a little bit easier. Like for instance, when you're hooking on a carabiner, pretend it's like a, a claw, like a grappling hook. If you clip on a carabiner like it's a grappling hook, through whatever connection you have, and then you flip it over, it's mounted the correct way. There's heaps of little things like that that you pick up over the years. Just show you some of the things I've picked up for tying ropes. You should be proficient at tying your knots when you're hanging off a crag or a cliff or whatever you're doing. You don't want to be there trying to work out you know, how to do this, how to do that, which way you're going around, trying to think. You want to be able to just do it really quickly without thinking, I don't even have to look. Uh, it's a, I've just tied a munter hitch really quickly and simply. I'm going to show you how to do those things. I'm going to just tie, I'm not looking again, I can just tie a clove hitch. If you learn how to do these things quickly and efficiently, it'll help you in the long run. So. I'll go through some knots. The first knot I'm going to show you is the munter hitch. And it's probably the most essential knot to learn because this one could actually save your life one day. It's a knot that I almost never use, but it's essential to know this knot, the munter hitch. I tie this knot simply by twisting it, sticking my thumb through the loop and then throwing it back over my thumb. I'll do that again. Twist the rope. Stick your thumb through it and then throw the loop over your thumb. You've created a mud hitch. It couldn't be more simpler than that, surely. You can actually clip a carabiner onto that. I can tie it very quickly and efficiently that way. You can also tie it over the carabiner exactly the same way as you do on your thumb. So learn how to tie it on your thumb first and then it's simply switching that technique straight onto the carabiner. I don't use the munter because it has the tendency to cut across the rope and most principles when you use rope is to put rope on steel or steel on rope, not rope on rope and the munter defies all those things by putting rope on rope but as I said, it could save your life. So you definitely need to know this knot to find out why you'll probably have to Google it. <laughs> and there's your munter created. You'll need to find out the correct uses of a munter because this is not a training video, it's just to show you how to tie the knot in the simplest way that I know how to. The next knot that's really important to know is the clove hitch. And I do it almost exactly the same way. That way, technique is simplified. I can remember it simply. You tie a clove hitch. What's good about the clove hitch is once it locks on, it doesn't move. So again, just make a twist in the rope like before, but just make another twist in the rope and stick your thumb through it. You've created a clove hitch. Again, like I said, I can do these without even looking at it. If you practice often enough, you'll get it simplified like that. Now I find this is the easiest way to tie these knots. You've done it correctly when you can see that cross on one side. This time I'll connect it to the carabiner. Here we go again. Create the loop, create another loop, pack your thumb through it, clip it on the carabiner, Cinch it up nice and tight. And when you cinch it up, 
it locks on and you can pull on one side or the other side it grabs always dress your knots nice and neatly so you can see what they are you can see the cross there so that cross you can see that flip it over and you'll see two straight lines that way you know you've done it correctly so there's the munter hitch and the clove hitch these two knots you should know whether you use them or not you definitely should know these knots they should be part of your knot routine the next knot I'm going to show you is called the alpine butterfly I tie one loop twist it again to form a second loop and now I have a hole through the middle this was the first way I was shown and I've just simplified it a little bit since then so I use my thumb my thumb goes down through that hole and then I follow the back of my thumb and poke the knot through where my thumb was that forms the alpine butterfly I'll tie one loop twist it again tie another loop this time I've got a second loop to stick my thumb through my thumb goes down through that hole and then I follow the back of my thumb and poke the knot through where my thumb was that forms the alpine butterfly the alpine butterfly is a good knot to tie in line on a rope because it is static it doesn't move and it follows the principle of continuing the line of pull it doesn't put any extra unnecessary bends in the rope so there it goes straight through in the direction of pull and the curves are just gently going around just go gently around and there's the munter hitch as you can see it cross loads itself forming a sharp angle and that's not a good thing when you're loading a rope you want to try and keep the path of the knot flowing in a smooth direction not cutting down on itself and as you'll see with the clove hitch it has two gentle bends it's gently going around my thumb pulling it out straight in both directions it's much safer to use show you on a carabiner just flows around smoothly and pulls through straight there's no sort of sharp cutting over the rope it actually does it's turning around the carabiner so once again I'll show you how the Munter hitch crosses over itself. It wants to pull. Th it wants to pull through the rope. I don't think you can see that. It wants to actually pull itself, like cut through the rope. And that's not a good thing I don't use this knot very often but I would really need to use this knot in an emergency so I definitely need to know it probably the knot I use most is the figure of eight on a bite when you fold the rope over and you have like a, a loop it's called a bite and I've tied a knot that looks like a figure like a figure eight and that's called a figure eight on a bite I'm dressing the knot now to make it look a knot, lot neater if you dress knots so that they look neater you can actually see that you've tied them correctly it's always a good idea 
to dress a knot once you've tied it to make sure and then that simple vision you can see it's tied correctly I'll do it again instead of just going through you go around again and then go through that makes an 8 you can see the 8 shape there time. I'm holding the bite in my right hand. Move it around, back around again, and through. There it is, the figure eight. This one's very badly dressed, so I'm going to fix that. And you can do this with all your knots. Just, just twirl the things till you get it looking nice and neat and even. You'll have a far better, stronger knot and it'll be a lot easier to untie in the finish. The next one I'm going to show you is called Bunny Ears. It's a variation of the figure eight. Instead of passing the bite through the last piece, I make another bite and I pass that through. So we'll do that once again. The figure eight is just back around and through. There's the figure eight. Dress it up again. I'm sure you're getting the idea now of a figure eight. Around. Back through. Figure eight. We want to make bunny ears. So there's one more tiny little extra move we need to do. We're going to make a bit longer bite this time by dragging the rope across. Go around. Back instead of poking the bite through we're going to make another bite in the rope and poke that through instead then you're left with the bite in your left hand that goes right over the top of everything pull that down and again dress that knot up nice and neatly it's pretty, looking pretty poorly at the moment, but I'll just straighten all those strands up. There we go, it's looking much better. Now I've created two loops. This comes in handy for a lot of things. Bunny ears. I can pull on each individual strand, and if one fails, the other one stays intact. It's good for that. It's also adjustable. I can change the length of the two ears. If you've got two bolts that are different positions, you can equalize an anchor, for instance, by changing the length of the bunny ears so you get your direction of pulling the correct way. And it's a simple enough principle just to swap the loops around. We made them back even again now. So just pull it through, pull the other one up, and there you go, you've got two different lengths. Attach them to your bolts if they're at that angle. Maybe they're the opposite angle. Flip it over. So that's a good one to know, bunny ears. And it makes your twin ropes redundant because you're actually abseiling on two ropes. I abseil on two ropes nearly all the time. Uh, so I actually have two independent ropes connected together. If one fails, the other one still stays intact. The next one I'm going to show you is another one that I use quite often. It's called a stopper knot. 
I put this in the end of the rope so I don't repel off the end of the rope. I use it for making Prusik cords. I used it for a whole lot of different things. And um, it's fairly easy to tie. Just make a pretzel. Pull it back around through, touch the tip of your thumb and pull through. So again, I'll keep doing the same kind of technique each time. I'll make a loop. I'll bring it back around and over so it looks like a pretzel. Twist it around and make it look like a pretzel. Poke your thumb through the pretzel hole. Don't poke it up and back through like that because that's wrong. Just make it look like a pretzel. That's wrong. Just make it look like a pretzel from one side. Stick your thumb through. Then bring the tail of the rope back around, touch the tip of your thumb, pull it through, and there you have it. The stopper knot. You can tie the stopper knot incorrectly, but it's easy enough to fix. Just flip the strands back over. And it's an easy one to visually check. Two strands on one side, a cross on the other side. That's the stopper knot. I'll do it again. Okay, this time I want to make a loop in the rope. Something that I can use such as a prosy cord or a cordelette. You could make a loop in the rope by just tying an overhand knot like this. It's not the recommended way to do it because it cross loads the strands when you load them. Just like the munter, just like the other knots that I showed you that cross load the knot. It's not meant to be pulled in that direction. It's cross loading the knot. So you can almost see that it's pulling and trying to pull the knot apart like that. And that's not a, not a very good way to tie it. We're going to do a knot that's far more safer. Doesn't cross load itself. And the stopper knot is also called a fisherman's bend. So what we're going to do now is call what, what's generally known as the double fisherman's bend. So make a loop and just put the two ropes opposite one another. Then we're going to make our pretzel again. Stick our thumb through, there's the pretzel. I stick my thumb through the pretzel hole, bring it around, touch the tip of the thumb, pull it through. I've put the stopper knot onto the other rope. To tie the second knot, you need to do it in reverse. But instead of doing it in reverse, it's easier just to flip it over. So it was that way. Now I've just flipped it over the opposite way. Now I can tie it in exactly the same way. Don't have to worry about doing it in reverse. I just go over again and make my pretzel. I haven't really given myself enough slack there to get it through. But we'll see. There you go. So now I've got two knots on that rope and pull together. You can tell you've done it correctly because you have two X's. The other side, you have four straight lines. Two X's, four straight lines. That's called the double fisherman's bend. follows the principle of keeping that rope in a straight line, in a straight pull. You can see it there, it's a really good one for pulling in a direct, a direct path of the rope. So I'll go through that one more time. Make my pretzel. Stick my thumb through. Bring the tail around, touch the tip of my thumb, and pull it back through. Well, 
what you can see I've done is I've actually made the stopper knot, it just happens to have another piece of rope passing through the center of it. And like I said, to tie it on the other side I would have to do it in reverse. But instead of doing that, it's, it's much easier just to flip the whole thing over and then do it in the same direction. So you only have to learn it, in, learn it one way instead of trying to learn the whole knot in reverse. Set my thumb through the pretzel, come around, didn't give myself enough space again. Create a pretzel, stick my thumb through the pretzel, bring the tail end around, touch the tip of my thumb and pull it through. There it is. The double fisherman's bend. Four on one side, two X's on the other. There's so many things in rock climbing and abseiling to learn and remember and they're just a few of the knots that are the essential ones to know and you could probably get yourself out of most situations by knowing those knots so they're good ones to learn. So I hope you enjoyed this little video on tying knots. See you later.